Thanks, Amelia. I debated which tie to wear. Uh, there were two ties that were in contention. This is the unicorn tapestry from the cloisters, which are this celebration of the extravagance of nature and also the Christian hunger for immortality. So this is a gift from Kate to me. I wore it at a funeral, and it's now my funeral tie. This is not a funeral, although it is a celebration of one who's gone. The other contender was a Simpsons tie that is now probably almost 30 years old. And Kate uh, moved to Boston after realizing that she did not want to be a depressed alcoholic in Wisconsin. She had gotten into a PhD program in Russian literature, felt inspired to just go check a few months before she started her coursework to make sure it was a good fit. And it, it, it was like frying the pistol out of the right hand and the fifth of vodka out of the left hand for every person in that department. And she said, that's not me. And so suddenly, she's just graduated from BYU, this beloved institution, and she's an adult, and she's no longer starting her PhD. And she remembered that her mother, uh, Kathleen Stewart, um, had taken her to Boston one rainy afternoon. She was 13 years old, and she said, I'm moving to Boston. So she just showed up. We met two weeks after she arrived. I'd wanted to move to Baltimore, but felt impressed that I needed to stay in the Boston area for my next phase of training and met her two weeks later and took her to a cadaver lab for our first date because I was just starting medical school. And she forgave me that stench and that strangeness. Um, but I'm getting there. <laughs> you young people are so impatient. Good heavens. So she tempted her way into a job at BU where she it was the manager for their core curriculum. And they had a variety of famous professors there that she became good friends with as she was prepping to do her own PhD work ultimately in religious studies. And there was a world famous literary critic uh, there who was a super charming Briton and was meeting me and Kate was a little embarrassed that I'd become obsessed with Simpsons 20 years after it was actually cool and had uh, started downloading episodes off a pirate website in France at a time when to get the internet you had to block a thing called a landline which is like a cell phone that ran out of money. Uh, so we had no communication with the outside world for 10 days as I downloaded Simpsons episodes. <laughs> So I could watch because this is all before Netflix, et cetera. So Kate in love rolled her eyes at me in his presence and he said, Simpsons? Simpsons is the greatest cultural product of the United States of America, the colonies, he winked, uh, in the last 50 years. And then proceeded to describe to me the extent to which Simpsons actually was the greatest literary production of the United States of America after 1950. And uh, was so taken with Kate, uh, in a in a good way that he bought a Simpsons tie to give to me so that I could remember that encounter and that understanding. So those are the two ties I have that have uh, substantial meaning. Uh, this book is a gift. Uh, as Amelia uh, observed, it's uh, at once both uh, searingly painful uh, for us and uh, magnificent. It, it, when it came out uh, back in August, it, it threw me into a fit of melancholy that lasted two fortnights. Uh, I'm old, I can measure time in those uh, units. Uh, but it is, is also such a gift. So I, I can't tell you how. Uh, we, you know, there's that old story that Thomas Edison invented the light bulb, but also was obsessed with the necrophone he was hoping that he could get a device that would let the dead speak. Well, uh, our good friends uh, at the Maxwell Institute invented the necrophone and the damn thing worked uh, in a way it never did for Edison. So thank you, those of you that made it happen. Uh, now I wanna give a little bit of color uh, to Kate. When, when we met, uh, 
when we met, we were at this moment where we were both figuring out who we would be. We were in our middle 20s, and she had just decided to come to Boston on a whim. And I had decided to stay in Boston, an inspiration. And as we got to know each other, she made very clear to me that if you wanted to understand her, you needed to understand the book, Women Who Run With the Wolves. And this, I think for you in college now, you'll be like, the what now? this like furries or something but the reality is this is a deeply influential book that tried to think about images of female power and spirituality in a way that moved well beyond the honorable power of women situated heavily in civilization so there was a sense of the wildness of female power and the other thing that she told me I needed to understand was this comment uh, from Joseph Campbell that you need to follow your bliss. And it subsequently become, of course, a T-shirt slogan that's largely semantically vacuous. Uh, but, but fundamentally what he meant was there's this capacity to connect with what is, what is joyous and meaningful and otherworldly. And for us, it would commonly be a... We, we might talk about being touched by the spirit or having a spiritual encounter, but it was also not just that quiet, you're doing the right thing. It was that awareness that your life can be transformed. And that sense of a clear seeing, joyous woman, utterly saturated with the wildness of female power will always be the Kate that I know and love. And the reality is that in our contemporary cultural moment, we tend to think that a woman like that would have no place in an institution like the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, which she loved with her whole heart and served with great affection and loyalty. And, and the message of this book that both things are true is really this expression of her fundamental life, that she was this woman that wanted to do almost anything we might associate with Epicurus and the Epicureans that wanted to worship in the wild places and wander barefoot into the sea with me on our third date when we were sort of lost in New York and suddenly on Brighton Beach, and someone who revered scripture, who revered prophets and seers and revelators and prophets Tesses, who, who revered priests and priestesses all within the, the garden that is this Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints that, that I love and that she loved. And so I just needed to throw together a few of the books that she uh, helped to edit. And um, I, I still love the Women in Mormonism collection and uh, that, um, that cover art is so beautifully Latter-day Saintish. I think that's how you say LDS now, I want to make sure. I know I don't say the M word, but Latter-day Saint-ish, because it's not Latter-day Saint-esque. It's truly Latter-day Saint-ish. Um, Precisely because that old story that Eve is like some dimwit that a talking snake persuades to destroy the world that the, our cousins in traditional Christianity tell, it's a load of crap, right? Eve is this clear-seeing progenitrix who realizes that the only way to live fully is to live in a sad world that can be transformed by that life. And so there's that sense of glory and ever so slightly wicked playfulness about having partaken of that fruit that I think they got right on that cover art. And then it move, moves through the work they did to recover uh, the voices of uh, spiritual foremothers in first that Relief Society magisterial tome and then in the follow-on journal of discourses for uh, female church leaders, call that the pulpit. And as I read those books and am excited for their presence, I continue to see that beautiful balance 
of a wild woman alive with the power of feminineness and and femaleness who was also deeply committed to this community of the saints but that was the i just wanted to get that little extra nuance of her so incredibly gracious and and suffered with some mental illness around anxiety and perfectionism that sometimes would keep her particularly as she came into the public eye keep her quieter and milder than she fundamentally was and i think we can forget that this incredibly gracious and careful and kind woman was also wild and gloriously wild thank you